are going to begin. So, okay. So please again, just make sure you're all muted. So my name is Marla Lee and um, I advertised this event all over online. So some of you guys may not know me, so I thought I would just take a moment and introduce myself. Um, yeah, I love playing the frame drum. That's, that's pretty much one of my favorite things to do. And um, I just, I run this online academy called Frame Drum Academy. And we just started our 2020 uh, season. And I noticed a lot of people were having questions about tuning. So I decided to offer this free training to help you guys. And, you know, honestly, when I was learning uh, frame drum, I'm still learning. But when I was in school for it, um, tuning was really the, so hard for me to, you know, and I would always bring my drums to my teachers. <laughs> Tune for me, you know, and um, I soon realized after I graduated that that wasn't possible. So I began my long lost quest for tuning and, um, and, and then, you know, I'd, I'd either go to my teachers or I'd wait till I go to the Cooperman shop when I'd visit Vermont to have them tune it, <laughs> which sometimes took months. But, you know, uh, I'm a classically trained musician and I play flute and I played in orchestras and bands my whole life. And tuning is very important. It's, it's really, really important. So um, it, it's just learning, you know, to develop your ear and listen for it. And... Uh, with these new drums that they're making, you know, like frame drums traditionally did not have a tuning system like they do right now, right? We have a very sophisticated tuning system that is used in the Cooperman frame drums, and um, it's also used in other types of um, drum, drums, other types of frame drums, not only the Coopermans. But it's, it's, we're so lucky that we can actually tune our frame drums, you know? And if you tune your drums correctly, they will stay in pitch. So this is what we are going to get you guys all. We're going to get you feeling confident to tune your frame drums so you don't have to touch them. Um, so let's just talk a little bit about uh, drum maintenance. And we talked a little about, about this uh, with our call with Patrick Cooperman and my Frame Drum Academy program. So. First of all, you want to keep your drums out of extreme heat. You, you should all know that by now, but um, even in my home, I have morning sun and like sometimes I forget to move my drums and I, and I play the drums that day and they're, they're like a little out of tune because they had the morning sun through my house. So you just want to make sure your drums live in like a nice area in your house that does not have extreme temperature changes, right? More so the sunlight. And then with that said, you also want to make sure that the drum, um, uh, the drum is not sitting in your hot car on a summer day, right? You, you want to make sure that like you, you care for your drums like you care for a child. I mean, I, I care for my drums like I care for a child or a pet. You would not leave a pet sitting in your car. Um, so besides that, they're very, very durable and, um, you know, Another one is to not hang them on the wall. So that also that also messes with the tuning system a lot. Because if you are sitting there and you're like, it's just like if you were sitting like this on a wall for like this, your body would get in that position and then it would be hard, right? You would be hard to get balanced. So it's really important to, you know, um, like you put the drums on the floor, just lie them down. You don't have to hang them up on a wall, right? I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna click on Patrick for this. Right, Patrick. Why don't we want? Why don't we want to hang them on the wall? Can you tell everybody about this? Because you have the words. You have the fancy well, words about the tuning system. <laughs> well, gravity works against uh, the drum staying around. So if it's being hung from a single point on the wall and it hangs there in one space for a long period of time, then yeah, like your example, if you're just hanging down there, all that weight is hanging down there, and it will begin to distort the drum. The drums are not perfectly round to begin with, but if uh, if they are distorted, it will make your tuning more of a challenge. The neat thing about the tuning system is that it overcomes any distortion in the true roundedness of the, of the shell. So you've got a lot going for you, but uh, yeah, exactly what Marla said. So though you guys do not know this is Patrick, uh, Patrick of Cooperman Frame Drums, and we love your drums. Thank you for the, the beautiful drums you make. And we're giving you some hands. Look at the hands. <laughs> you see all the love? Aww. <laughs> well, 
Well, thanks. I, 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 will, I would say that, that it's hard to resist uh, hanging a drum on a wall because they're, they're attractive. And, and, and so you can do it, but just rotate it from time to time so it doesn't become distorted by hanging in one place all the time, all right? What do you mean by time to time? Every few days? Every time you walk past it and admire it, just rotate it a little bit, all right? Yeah. It, it, there's no rule. There's no set, set uh, system for doing this. It's just, it's just be smart about it. You know, it's like just take care of it, like your pet. <laughs> you don't paint. You don't hang your pet from the wall. <laughs> you know when your pet wants to go out, and then you let it out. The drum is going to tell you. You know, it's, it's time to pick me up and play me, right? Can you also tell us while you're while you're here? Um, your tuning system that you use in the Cooperman frame drums, where else are they, where else is that tuning system used? Like if they have another brand, like are other brands using the tuning systems that you have or? A, a lot of the drum builders are using that same system. We actually patented this tuning system in nine, uh, 92, 90, 1992, 93. So it was a discrete tuning system. Variations of it occur uh, across the board over a long period of time. So that's why it's not unlike lugs on the outside of a drum, but we've embedded the hardware into the shell. So, uh, you know, I think a lot of Middle Eastern drums that are now tunable uh, use that same system. Minel uses that system. Uh, Remo does on a few, on a, on a limited number of the drums they make. So it's, it's around. I think the alternative system in frame drums is, uh, would be an air tuning system where around the margin of the drum is an, is an inner tube that is inflated and pushes out on, on the head causing it to tension. So those are the two main systems, either a, a, a specific point tuning system like ours or lugs around the outside, like an inexpensive uh, imported Pakistani drum maybe, or the air tune system, which is in some of the higher end uh, European makers drums. Hmm. Oh, I, I would say that what, what makes it different, what, what's in between that air tuning system and, and this, uh, what I call discrete point systems is on the discrete point systems. Imagine you've got the circle and you've got all these uh, pieces of the pie. Uh, what, what you can do with the discrete point system is you can take every one of those segments of your pie all the way around and compensate for out of roundness. That might happen because the Cooperman company made the drum slightly out of round or because you hung it on the wall and it distorted. Uh, so that, you know, that, but each one of those segments can be compensated. So it's not like you're always trying to bring it up evenly. You don't really want, in my mind, to bring it up evenly. That's what the air system does that I don't like about the air system, but it, it's pretty slick. What the air system does is tune the entire thing all at the same time. So it's yeah. not, there's not any discrete tuning. It's only like you're either up or you're down, but you can't fix a problem in the, um, in the out of roundness and uh, the head being stuck in some point, or, this, or the head actually, if you're having a skin head on, on your drum, for example, if the skin is thicker in one area than the other, you may need a little more tension on that thick part of the skin. Yeah, different you, can't do that with, you can't do that with an air tuning system, but you can do it with a discrete points. And can you tell us um, also, uh, when you make a Cooperman drum and before you send it out, what, like, do you, um, do you tune the drum up or do you like, Mm -hmm. How far, like, what do you, like, uh, how, does it arrive, how does it arrive to the, the you know, the right. purchaser? We don't tune it to a pitch. So it's not like I'm saying, oh, this, uh, this drum should be a, a D and I, and it's, and it's a D. All we want is for the drum to be in tune with itself. So we want it to not sound wonky, right? So I, I happen to have one here. Um, you have a frame so, drum? Huh? <laughs> Uh, this is a 14 inch B bend here. I know that Kathy's got one of these. Anyway, um, what, what we would do is uh, the head is mounted, it's, it's tightened it's with heat, and so it's, it's at a fixed place. We listen to it, we go around, and we uh, mount the drum at what I call zero. So that means that you can't back it down anymore. Uh, there's nowhere to go down. So the drum is, is all the way down. We then listen to it, we turn it up, one full turn, so 360 degrees on the wrench, one full turn on the wrench, up, in my mind, and I listen to it, and I, and I say, is this, well, this drum is buzzing because it's a bend here, right? But I listen to it. Is, it, is it, is the fundamental pitch okay to my ear? If Marla were here, we would have a more complicated conversation, but for me, I, I listen to it, I was like, that's perfect. <laughs> All right, 
so I what so I feel like the drum is good with itself. And that means that when you get when the when the customer gets the drum in their hands, they can back it down a little bit so they can go down one full turn and the head will be dead. Or they can start going up and it can go up one full turn easily. Beyond that, you're risking over tensioning the drum. Okay. All right. Does that make sense? It makes sense. Yeah. And um, we'll see how we'll see how long this goes. But you know, if you guys have right. any questions, maybe we you could take. Would you be okay at the end of this if anyone has a Patrick question they could ask you while they're on? Sure. I'm still paying attention. <laughs> still paying attention. And we'll make sure you pay attention. <laughs> okay. So. Um, mute me. Yeah, I'm gonna mute you. <laughs> Thank you, Patrick. <laughs> So, okay, when you guys get your drums, you know, however you get them, well, I'm going to talk about my, the Cooperman experience because that's what I play, but as you know that their tuning systems are similar for other companies like the Meinl. So when you get your drums, the first thing you want to do is you want to make sure that the drum is set in the collar pattern. Aren't you proud of me for saying this? He taught me all this. I'm like, I feel like his like student here. <laughs> And so what I would like you guys to do right now is obviously you all are watching this because you have a frame drum. So if you could get your frame drums, please, and make sure you're muted. Again, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to um, double check that you're muted, everyone's muted, and um, can you hold your frame drums up? Can I see everyone's frame drums? <laughs> so pretty. <laughs> Okay, so the first thing you want to do is you want to, hold on, let me get out of exit full screen. You want to go around and set the collar. So what I'm doing here is I'm, I'm going around on the rim and I'm pushing it. Patrick, you can be, our, you can be my model. <laughs> it's like that show, what's that TV show? It's the woman model. <laughs> Da, 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 da. <laughs> and so, yeah, he's pushing in right here. Yeah, yeah. And don't, you know, don't be shy, right? Like, if you have a total new drum, like Kathy, I know that I know one of our students, Kathy, just got a drum. So I know that it's a new drum. You might hear, <laughs> you know, and that's a good sound. It's like it's like when you go to the chiropractor and you get your back cracked. It's actually a really, really good sound. And and Patrick, if you want to add in anything that I'm not saying, you can unmute yourself and. And you can be silent. You can be our, our okay. So the first thing you do when you get your drum is that you is that you set the collar. You 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 know you want to give it some push on the edges, and then you might notice that it might change the sound of your drum. So we actually have a document that states like the different keys that the drums like to live in. So if you're completely new to frame drumming, right, there is not one frame drum that is going to be in all of the pitches, you know, of the scale. That's just not possible. So I find that there is like a, like a two whole step, maybe a three whole step range per drum. Um, you don't want to change it more than that. So for example, we're, look, we're thinking about the, the, the scale, right? So if you think of C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. If you have a drum, so for example, I know that the uh, 20 inch drums, are really good for D. Okay, so oh look at that. We have our <laughs> Wait, can you can you hold that up for a second? <laughs> so, no, 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 no. There we go. So if you have if you have a drum that sounds good in D, you're really not going to be able to tune it higher than F. You really don't even want to go there. Like D and E is really like the place to be. If you really want to give it, you can go for an F but it really is a D drum because it likes to be a dr D drum. That's where, it, that's where it sounds happiest, you know? But sometimes, why you, thank you, Patrick, you can move now if you want. Why you, why you would want to change the pitch is if you are performing with somebody and they're in the key of, you know, E, and your drum is in D, it's gonna sound like da 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 da, -da right? It's gonna have that crazy resonance. So that's why it's a nice thing with the drums, you can tune it to match the musician you're playing with. Now, if you're just playing by yourself, you don't have to, you know, mess with the tuning to, you know, raise it a half step higher, a whole step higher. 
it wants to be in its sweet spot. So you want, if you're playing with yourself, you just want to make sure the drum is in tune with itself, right? The only, again, the only time you want to change the pitch is if you are using it to perform with someone else, or if you, you know, you like to sing and, and it like, it sounds like a better key um, in, in, the, in that pitch. So otherwise you don't need to mess with the tuning to, to raise it that much. And you know, before, um, you know, I would try to uh, raise drums really high and it was just like terrible. It's really bad for the head. So it's like, just imagine like you are in this body, right? And then you want to stretch my skin, like to, to, to reach a place that's not possible. It's really bad for the head of the drum to try to raise it more than like, you know, three, four whole steps, you know, a fit or something like that. It's just like, it's not good. So, um, we have a handout, so I'm gonna in in this. I did press record, right? Okay. In you are, you are all gonna get a replay, and you're also gonna get a handout of the tuning of the different keys. So you're gonna get a key chart of you know what what size drum sounds good in which key. So you can refer to that, you know. And it's nice to have a, a, a variety of drums and pitches to play in. Okay, so that's number one. Is make sure you know make sure you know why you're tuning it. Don't just pick up the drum to just tune it, right? You want to pick it up, and if it doesn't sound right, then you should tune it, right? Or if you know you're going to have a performance, which we're all going to be doing soon, right? You're hanging out, you know, um, and, and you know that you have a performance and you want to get your drums tuned up for that, then you should switch it. But otherwise, the, the drums just want to be played, okay? Now, when I'm tuning my drum, how I know if I want to check to see if it's in tune, first of all, I can hear when it's out of tune. So this drum here, it's a mess. This drum is a mess. And you know, you're, I, I didn't, you know, I knew it was a mess. I didn't touch it. I was like, I'll just touch it at, at the class. And um, so I know it's a mess because it just, it just sounds out of tune, okay? Now to develop your ear, this is what you can do. Um, you're gonna find a pitch that you like. So, I'm going to sing this pitch. But then, I'm hitting right here. So I'm hitting right here on the, where the pegs are. Okay, so I'm hitting one of the pegs. And I remember, remember which peg you first hit. So like, I'm making a muscle memory. This is the peg I hit. Then I'm going to go to the next peg, and I'm going to hit. tuning to and this one is a little high so in musical terms when we say something is high it's not it's because it is sharp so you might want to write that down it's a little sharp so we want to so then I'm going to go up and I'm going to pick I'm going to go to the next tuning thing and I'm going to sing my pitch my bass pitch so whatever bass pitch you have then I'm going to go to the next peg. So first I, I went to the first one here. This is my bass peg. And then I went here and I, I noticed it was out of tune, but I'm not going to switch it. I'm just kind of just, I'm going to just hear it now and then I'm going to tune it, change it. So then I'm going to go to the next peg. I'm going to keep singing my bass pitch. Wow. I'm, I'm just going around the drum and I'm, I'm noticing it's really, really out of tune with the pitch that I'm singing. Okay, so just take a moment right now and try that yourself. Just see if you can find the pitch that you want your drum to be at, that you like. Find one pitch you like. One of the of the one of the pegs has to have a sound that you like. Okay? Sing it. Hum it. Okay? And then go around to the other pegs and see if it's that same pitch or is it higher? Is it sharper? Is it lower? Is it flatter? We can't hear you, although it would be really fun to unmute everybody and hear you sing right now with the drum. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Patrick, I see you. Unmute yourself. Oh, wait. So, so after what you're saying, so if you hear a spot and you, and you make an adjustment, mm -hmm. like, after you make the adjustment, it would be really smart to like go back around real quick and reset the collar because that makes everybody jive into that new position. 
Okay, they haven't made an adjustment yet, though, because we're we're we're, right, so we're I'm in. you're ahead of okay. me. Yeah, is that right. is that for each time each one adjustment to reset the color, or is it the whole? It wouldn't hurt. Okay, That's so why, I'll why, take them through that. Doing it, I was like, I can hear it, and then I'm like, oh, I should squeeze it and make sure it's it's moved. Okay, all right, I'll I'll take them through that. Okay. Thank you. All right, so now that you have the pitch that you want to tune your drum to. We're gonna tune. So, do we all have our tuning key? Yes, yes, tuning keys in hand. Tuning key. <laughs> all right, so, to go higher, now if you maybe wanna write this down, right? If you want the pitch, you want the drum to go higher, you want to make it sharper, you go to the right. Maybe you all wanna write this down. Righty tighty. That's what I think about, right? Right tighty. You want to make the drum go sharper. You turn to the right. And then if you want to make the drum go flatter, lower, you turn to the left. Lefty loosey. <laughs> Does that have to mean like if you're right handed, you're more tied up, and if you're left handed, you're more like loosey goosey? Yeah, well. <laughs> Okay, so with that said, you're going to sing the pitch. Now, sometimes, you know, you can have your metronomes, they have a uh, pitch that you can just play a drone that you can tune to. So I have this thing that I have online, right? It's just this like, it's just like metronome drone thing, right? So you can hear, can you guys, you guys hear that? Shake your head, yes? Yeah? Oops. Did you get, could you hear that, Patrick? Yeah, you could, okay. So it's just like, it's this little thing that I put on when I want to tune my, when I tune my frame drum. So, you know, you could find your metronome, um, it has a little pitch thing, whatever, whatever you need to do. Um, but then if you are not tuning to a certain pitch, you can just tune to the, the tone of your voice. Okay, so if you have a metronome and, you, and it has a pitch tuner, you can use that or you could just use your voice. So for now, let's use our voice. So you're gonna, my drum has its own sound that I'm gonna tune to. Um, so this is the one I like. So just watch how I'm gonna do it. So then I, then I go, then what, so because I'm not doing a big tuning, so if I was tuning like two whole steps or something like that, or three whole steps up or below, I would do a tuning way that they do in the snare drum, traditional snare drum, where you go cross, 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 cross okay but because I'm only tuning my drum small increments I'm gonna go like this okay so it depends on how it what you know how much you are tuning your drum again if you are tuning it like one whole step two whole steps up or below I recommend doing the cross and what that is is just the way the same way I'm going to show you how to tune but you just go like doop doop cross cross cross, 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 and just make sure you don't get lost. Like it's really easy to get lost and then, you know. But you don't need to tune that way, I find, when you're doing smaller increments of tuning, which is pretty much the majority of you guys, you know, doing this. So that's what I'm going to show you today. Okay, so this is the pitch I want to tune to. Everyone is going to anchor in on one pitch they want to tune to. And then you're going to take and you're going to go to the next tuning key. Um, I'm left-handed, so I go to the left. You could also go to the right if you're right-handed. You have your own ways of going. So I'm going to go to the one right next to it. And I'm going to sing. You know. So that pitch is sharper. It's higher. So if the pitch is higher, what am I going to do? Yeah, I'm going to turn it down. I saw some people say the word down. So I'm just going to turn now. Watch this. If I'm turning it down, I'm not... I'm not going to town. I'm not like, <laughs> I'm not doing wrist exercises. I am doing, because it's such a small change of pitch. It's very minute, right? But this is so good for us because it slows us down. It gets us to listen, gets us to breathe, and it gets us to be more in tune. So it's a very small increment. Like I'm going, chip, like really, really small. Okay. And then I'm going to test it. Now what Patrick was saying was like each one, if you want, if you have all the time in the day, <laughs> after each one, you can go around and then set in the collar again and then go to your next, then you go to your next 
peg, okay? So I started on this peg, and then I'm gonna go to this peg. So why don't you guys try right now um, to, to tune. So once again, if, it, if the pitch, if it's, um, if it's low, you wanna make the pitch higher, right? You wanna raise it, so you make the drum tighter by going to the left. Well, you got to go the whole drum. <laughs> you gotta, yeah, just go the whole drum. So I'm going to mute myself too because I I want to I want to get my drum in tune. I just had a baby coyote walk outside my porch. <laughs> you guys brought in the coyote medicine. <laughs> That's kind of crazy. Okay. So I would suggest to write this down. This is really, really important that you remember this. Um, I, I've, I've just discovered this little draw tool, so woo! <laughs> Tuning. So when you turn the key to the right, it makes the pitch higher. Right? And when you turn the key to the left, it makes the pitch lower, flatter. So these are really, really important things that become automatic the more you tune, right? But in the beginning, I had to write this down. This was really important that, you know. So when someone says, you know, if you notice that the pitch is, is just like, if the pitch is too high, right? If the pitch you want to have and, and that you're, you know, if, if one of the pegs is too high, you know which way to turn your key, right? You know that you're going to have to tune your key to the left to make it looser. Okay, so these are the things that you want to kind of like learn in your brain so it becomes autom automatic. Um, yeah. As a flute player, tuning my flute, tuning my flute in like bands was, was all about this. Like that was the first thing we learned was like pulling in or out with our head joint. It's really, really important. So this will become easier the more you guys do it. So 
I'm going to move away from this. You guys all have this down, written down somewhere? There's a smiley face. These drawing tools, I, I, I'm going to, here's my smiley face. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. So now we're going to, um, oh yeah, the I, I, that's good, Ariana. Nice to see you here, sweetheart. Um, the iTempore app is a great one to tune to as well. It's great. Yep. Um, so we have a little bit, we have like five minutes of anybody has any questions that they want to ask about their tuning experience. You can ask Patrick and I, I'm going to unmute Patrick to, um, and if you have a question, um, uh, Betty Lynn. Betty Lynn, do you want to unmute yourself and ask your question? I'm going to allow participants to unmute themselves. No, you can't. Betty Lynn, Betty there. Lynn. There. Thank you, Marla. And hi, uh, Patrick. I'm just unclear. I've never heard about the squeeze, and I'm unclear if we're squeezing here, so the skin down around the rim, or are you talking about squeezing it smooth here on the top of the rim or the side of the rim or whatever this is called? Where's the pressure point when you're squeezing the rim? I'm, uh, I'm gripping it like, uh, like my hand is like a C, right? And I'm going uh, on the bottom rim of the drum here. And I'm going at like right at the edge of the of the inside the edge of the bearing edge, and I'm just squeezing it right there. So the actual do... skin, not the wood. No, the, the skin. Yes, you're trying oh. to. Oh. Because what you're trying to do is uh, there's a tendency for the head material, whether it's synthetic or or, or an animal skin to yeah. uh, bind a little bit with the wood along that margin. And oh. so when, when you squeeze the head right there, at, at, you know, here, right inside yeah. the bearing edge, it, um, it forces any stickiness to release on, on the wooden part. But oh. squeezing that, so you're not really squeezing the wooden part, you're squeezing no. the head, that makes the head flex, you're forcing the head to flex. So it's the skin about a finger's width in from the rim, something like that. Yeah, uh, or, or maybe the joint of your fingers inside, you know, that, that's all it is. Oh, all that the, way. Oh, okay. That yeah, I mean, well, you know, I think you saw me being sloppier and maybe doing, doing this, you know, so I, I, I'll go around the drum like this. Oh. You know? and, I, and then what am I like an inch or two inches inside here, but not more than that. And, and it's really depends on the depth of the drum. This is only a, a three quarter inch drum. This one is three and a half inch. So it's harder for me to grip and be inside. Uh, it's right. okay out here. All you're really trying to do is flex the head. You'll see uh, roadies at uh, rock concerts or something and they, they'll pound the head, you know, in the center. You see uh, David Cooperman do this, you know, all, all he's doing is flexing the head. You're forcing the head to make sure it floats. Wow. Wow. I've never seen that. I appreciate your Oh, well, I imagine Marla does this too sometimes, right? I'm sure she does. <laughs> I just wasn't in that course. <laughs> <laughs> <That's> not... <laughs> but um, at what point then is it important to, to, uh, to tighten on the opposite side? If you're just tightening it a little, Marla, are you suggesting we don't have to go across? We were taught always to go across like this so that the skin was not pulled more in one direction than the other. Right, but if you're only tuning a little bit, like right. a little bit, it's okay. You're not really okay. stretching the head. It's only when you're doing like one, like a one step, two steps, three steps, you know, okay. higher or lower. But when you're doing small micro tunings, I don't, right. I think it's, it's much, I think it's, you're not hurting the head doing The that. skin is not at risk. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Nice thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Patrick. <laughs> um, all right. So we are, um, let me meet you. There we go. We're going to um, end this class, but um, people are asking about pitches. So um, I'm going to send out with the replay a pitch a key chart that has the different size drums and the different pitches that sound nice for the different size drums. So you guys can refer to that. 
And um, maybe we have time for one more tuning question while you have me or Patrick here. Anybody have one more question they want to ask? Oh boy, we have a couple of questions. Um, <laughs> Sherry, I saw your hand. I'm going to unmute you, Sherry. I don't hear you, honey. Can you unmute yourself? There you are. There we go. All right. Hi. It's nice to see you guys. Nice to see um, you. Where the um, where there's a split inside, the oh. light come through from the top to the bottom where the two pieces come together. Mm -hmm. Should that always have space between it? Because sometimes when I tune it, I, I took it all the way down at one point because my drum, even though it was tuned to itself, felt very deadened. It, it didn't sound good. Um, so I took it all the way down and then I, you know, I stretched the, the uh, head. Um, but I noticed that there's places um, where the two pieces come together where you see space and then there's places where it's tight together. Oh, Patrick, will you answer that question, please? This is a good one. You're, look, you're looking at the, you're looking right. at where the, the the seam where the top yeah. and the bottom come yeah. together. Yeah, we're looking at the gap. There we go. The right. gap. There you right. go. So the gap is is a is a guide, but not a tell-all guide, and it has partially to do with what we were talking about, like the segments of the pie and the tuning system. Can you show people in the in, in before you talk about this? Can you show this in a drum because many people might not know. What you're yeah, I don't about. have. A, I, if I had a drum that had, I don't have one in front of me that that's really. Uh, it displays it nicely. Um, you know, I don't know whether now nah, none of these are, are good displays because what, what you'd want to see is the light coming through there. I mean, you can hold your drum up and kind of look and see that gap, and I think that's what, what, what we're talking about. Yeah. So when the drums are made, they're made whole in, in our case. Uh, so the, the drum is made, say, three inches or three and a half inches deep, and then we split the top tuning ring off of it. So they're mated for light. But when we're, when we're cutting that, when we're splitting it off, we could wobble just slightly as we go around the drum, leaving the rim just slightly higher in one space than another. So that's one reason why the gap is not the perfect tell-all. Otherwise, you could fit something into that gap all the way around, tuned to that spot, and you'd be in perfect pitch. That doesn't work, unfortunately. Right. The other part of it is that when we're talking about each one pieces of that pie, is that it may very well be the case that one segment of your pie needs to be tighter than the other side, right? That, and that would be the result of the head being stuck somewhere, the drum being slightly out of round, the skin being mounted with not perfect tension when it was made, or the skin being uneven in its thickness and its gauge thickness when it was made, whether it's a skin head or you have the spine of the animal that's denser in one spot than another, or the manufacturing of a roll of synthetic material at Remo where it's just slight variations in the actual micrometer thickness of the head. When you tune and you see that gap changing, you're making the ear tuning adjustment to those defects in the, in the drum itself. That's a good thing. And that's why the tuning in those little ways is really important. People think too often that the tuning is about changing it from a D to an E or something you know crazy like that. Whereas what what I think Marlo's done a great job today of expressing to you is that when you're doing this mic micro adjustments, which is what tuning is really all about, your drum has a very limited tuning range. And when you're making those minor adjustments, you really are just tweaking uh, tympanic tension there all the time. And that will result in one part being slightly higher than another. It's why I said I don't like that, that uh, air tuning system because it just raises everything up wholesale. If you have an air tuning system and you increase the tension, you should see the gap go up absolutely evenly. If you looked at all the way around, you would see that gap nice and even, hopefully, right? But in our case, we don't like to see the gap perfectly even because it means that we've just made some wholesale idea about how the drum should be tuned. And it's probably just not the case. It's probably just not true. You're better off using your ear to hear the differences and follow Marla's instructions to do little tiny tunings all the way around. Does that make sense? I hope. So yeah, the gap, look at it because it's a good clue. It would be a real clue if one place was really crazy high, There's, then you probably have a problem. But if one, one section is a little higher than the other, but it sounds good, go with, <laughs> with the bottom line. If it sounds good, it is good, right? Okay, yeah. thank you. Yeah. yeah. Um,
And do you have to, if you have, if you have a um, tunable skin, so when you have a real drum skin head, do you have to loosen it again after you're playing? Patrick, what do you think about that? More so than the synthetic head, yes, because what happens is the, uh, the skin head is dynamically adjusting to its uh, ambient humidity condition. And so when you're tuning it up, you're stretching that head up. It will memorize that new place. Synthetic heads are less smart about memorizing spaces, right? So the synthetic head will stretch and, and fall back down and up and down, but the skin head will just stay there. Then the next time you tune the drum down, the skin head, the collar just stays right there where you had it tuned up high and you pull your tuning system down and it, and it just deadens and buzzes. So yeah, a, a, if you have a skin head, definitely tune your drum back down after you've tuned it up and played it up high. There's one other comment I'd, I'd like to make uh, that, that's general, and it is that um, about these different heads, whether it's a skin head, a Remo Renaissance head, a Remo Ebony suede head, they're not different pitches, although they sound different, right? They're different tones. So all of those different head materials are giving you a different tone, but not a different pitch, right? So the same drum, a 14 inch drum, whether it has a Renaissance head or, or an ebony suede head, if it has the same tympanic tension, it's gonna give you the same pitch. That's just physics. But it actually is gonna sound different. So tone, the tone of your drum is not always the same as the pitch of your drum. Does that make sense, Marla? Is that true? <laughs> or am I making something else? I think it's true. I think I think it's true. Yeah. Um, I think it's really important what you said, though. Like, if it sounds good, you don't need to tune it. It's really, you know, some people I've seen just like, oh, you know. Yeah, you want to make sure that, yeah, it sounds in tune with itself. That's the most important one. Um, but I remember one time, a long time ago, when I was first learning about these strain drums, I'm going to mute you, Jerry, because we can hear you. So, cool. um, and I remember that uh, looking, look, this was really important, you know, the, the micro tuning was really important and I wasn't doing that. I was going for like really big tunings, you know, and so the micro tuning is, is really a good, good way to start. Um, Linda, did you have your hand raised? I thought I saw your hand raised. Why don't you, and I'd love to say hi to you. Can you unmute yourself? There we go. Oh, wait. There we go. Nice to see you. Let's take see one more here. question from you and then we'll. we'll okay. Um, when you're playing with, with other drummers, um, should you always have your um, drums tuned uh, two notes apart from each other? Ah, uh, well, what are they playing? Are they playing frame drums? Yes. That's weird. You know, I think that's drummer's choice. It's really kind of what you like, but um, I think that's weird. That's a, that's a not, that's like a one step dissonant. I would do two steps. So I would do a thirds. So, so, so like if your key, your, if your drum is in D, their drum can be an F. B and F. That's what I meant. E, D, D and F. D B for dog. F. Two yeah. notes apart. Yeah. Two notes apart. Or we call that a third, like a third apart. Third. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Yeah. Linda has a wonderful dance and music um, place in Florida. Is that is this still going on? Do you still? I mean, when when no, you I, I had to close it. Yeah. I had to close it. Well, it will. It will. It will. You know, something new will flourish. You know, it's. Yeah. It's yeah. Beautiful. Seven years I had that, and uh, but, you know, and when you have no no teachers and no students because everybody's afraid to go out, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Yes. It, it will come back and it will, it will, it will, it will come back and yeah, it's, it's really good to see you. And um, yeah, yeah when, when you, when you start to play with people and you tune your drums, make a video and share it with us. And, and, and we'd love to see what you're doing. All right. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. So if you have any other questions, you can, um, you know, message Patrick or myself. And I just want to thank you guys so much for, spending an hour with us today and um, learning how to keep your drums in tune. And um, again, I'm going to send a replay with the handout with the tuning sheet. So the different size drums and, and you know, the pitches that they work nicely with. And yeah, they, they really should stay in tune with itself, which is really nice about these mechanisms, unless you're, you know, you leave it in the sun or you leave it in your car, like it, it will stay in tune. So. All right. Have a beautiful day. Thank you. Thank you, Patrick, for joining us. Bye.
Bye bye. Happy drumming. Thank you, Marla. Thank That's you, Patrick. With all the drums. I wish we could I all hang out. Yeah. Bye. <laughs> Thanks. Aww.